Merry Christmas! And let's come to Peter, corporate reporting, and here's the Christmas gift for you. And one of the topical example areas in the exam is related to disposal of group. So how are you going to account for it as well? So if you sell off your subsidiary to somebody else, that's absolutely fine. In both of these single companies, account as well as the group companies account, for example single companies PL and the groups PL, you have to show the profit or loss as a result of a disposal. And particularly within the groups stone profit loss, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my mnemonics for this. It's called BT to show the profit loss as a result of a disposal of a subsidiary. And of course you can argue that because you dispose of the shares of a subsidiary and then you lose control of that subsidiary and that subsidiary is not your subsidiaries anymore so what you need to do then is you're going to de-recognize those assets and liabilities, income and expense from the days that you lost control from your financial statements onwards as well as any of, any of this uh, goodwill that you've recognized before and so on so let's see, so as you can see, the mnemonics for the BT is we're going to compare the total business at the date of disposal with total list things left for that subsidiary at the date of disposal as well. So gains losses, we'll put that into the PL in the group account. So let's see the question called complete limited uh, to see how we're going to put this together into this particular question. So first of all requirement is to show the accounting treatment for the single company's FS and secondly related to groups FS. So let me put that here. So first of all we're going to show it in a single company's statement of loss and other comprehensive income. So it said on 1st January 2015 that Complete Limited acquired 60% of Nothing Limited for $360 million. So that means, okay, on 31st December, if we look at the next page, the Complete Limited sells 15% of Nothing Limited for $115 million. So that means, okay, there will be no revaluation of those shares in the individual's accounts either using the p or OCI. So if that's the case then, that we sold for $150 million worth of cash and the carrying value for that share in the single company's account is worth at $360. So, it's actually worth 360, but we only sell it for 150, so it end up with a loss on disposal worth of 210 million dollars. We're going to put that into single companies group, uh, single companies P and L. But it's quite different in the group companies P and L. So let's talk about this. Secondly, the groups P and L. So I'm going to use mnemonics for this, it's called BT. So let's see how we're going to apply this first of all in your paper 2 exam. It's very important for you, lay, for you to lay out the BT formula in the exam, BT pro forma in your exam first, before you slot the numbers in. Okay, so let's do it. First of all, it's the B. It's the business at the disposal date. And then we're going to compare that with the T is the things left at the disposal date. So let's see the first of all the business will include the cash coming into the company and the NCI reduction and thirdly will include the remaining things. So for example if we dispose of shares and we lose control but at the same time we still own for example 40% of shares so that becomes our associate but if we dispose of shares and we now have less than 20% of shares 
So that would become a simple investment. And you can argue that if we dispose of 100% of shares, so there will be no remaining things left within the group. Okay, so that would not be a total business anymore. Total things left to include, for example, the unimpaired goodwill. So, the goodwill will be the excess amount of money that we pay for a subsidiary when we acquire it. And if there's any impairment for the goodwill, yes, we account for it under the ICE number 36, impairment of asset. But that impairment of goodwill would just to be the accounting treatment. So when we are accounting for the disposal of the subsidiary, we need to reverse those impairment losses for the goodwill back. Okay, so that's the idea behind it. And also we are gonna we are gonna minus the net asset at the date of disposal as well. For the subsidiary. So let's see then. It said that we dispose uh, we acquired a company uh, the value 365 and the nothing limited has the identifiable net asset at the fair value at the date of acquisition worth of its 400 million dollars and the fair value of NCI uh, was 210. So if that's the case then okay because we are quite 60% of them so the NCI percentage would be 40%. So, if that NCI percentage is 40%, okay. So, NCI reduction, so now 40% of shares. So, the fair value of the NCI was 210, so 210 at the start, and uh, I mean, because we acquired it on 1st January, what would be the NCI, uh, I mean, as at the year end, on 31st December then? So, we are posing a question that, if you look at the final paragraph, the growth of the, NC, uh, of the subsidiary was 30, so it times 30 million dollars here. So that would give us 2 to 2 million. So that would be a reduction of the NCI. Why it would be a positive thing to the company is simply because for those NCI are those shareholders who do not control the company. We should pay for them dividends, but now we don't have to because that is not a subsidiary anymore. So if that's the case, a reduction in the NCI, we're going to put that as the positive in the business at the day to disposal. And also we are told we sold it for $150 million. That would be a catch in. And also we are told that the remaining shares of 45% now will be accounted for as so associate measure at 400. So we put that into remaining one. So the business of the date of disposal would be $772 million. And also we are told in a question at the date of disposal that the identifiable net asset in the, in the final paragraph is to be 440, okay? And also we are told in a question, what about for the good way then? Uh, for the good way, so let's see then. We are not told about the goodwill at all, so let's now calculate, say, at the date that we acquire the Nothing Limited. Start working for this. So, according to IFAS number three business combinations, there will be two ways that we can calculate the goodwill. We can either use the full goodwill method or the partial goodwill method. So, the pro forma for this is we're going to compare the fair value of the consideration. I mean, unlike in the paper F7 exam, so in the paper 7 
paper F7 exam, we rather use, for example, the catch page of shares, issues, and that kind of stuff here. But in the paper 2 exam, sometimes uh, there will be a change in ownership uh, within that subsidiary. For example, we haven't got control first, but now we've got control. It's the step acquisition. And hence, we are required to revalue those initial investments that we've made before and put the gains losses to the P&L. So that's the reason why we tend to use the fair value of consideration in the paper to exam. And then we plot the NCI minus the net asset of a subsidiary at the date of acquisition, which would then give us the good way. If there's any impairment, okay, fine. So we also have to add it back, okay, in the disposal of the subsidiary. So, we spent 360 to purchase the shares, and the NCR, yeah, the date of acquisition was 210, and the fair value of the asset at the date of acquisition uh, was 400. So the balancing figure would go into Goodwill would be $160 million. So we put them back, $160. So that gives us the total things left in total would be $600 million. So the gains and losses then would be $172 million we'll put into the group stamp of loss and other comprehensive income. And of course we have to de-recognize all of these assets, liabilities, income, expense of the nothing limited because we've got no control over it anymore. But at the same time, we have to account for that nothing limited as the associate using equity accounting method. So this is rather complicated, I admit that in the paper two exam. Hope you're happy with this section for the mnemonic called BT, okay, just the personal uh, gift for you. And should I say, Good luck with your paper two exam. APC, accounting for your future.